Hey YouTube, I have here two GFCI circuit protectors. These are portable ones that allow you to protect uh, any kind of device in the field. They're meant to measure the current uh, leaving through the line and returning back through the neutral to find an imbalance. If you're in the UK, you might know them as residual current devices. Uh, both of these were reported as broken and tested broken, so I'm gonna try and open them up and see if we can figure out what's gone wrong. So I'm going to power them up first and try the uh, reset and test buttons. So one of them is definitely working and this one seems to be working. I'm going to go find something to power from here and see whether this works. Uh, there might have been some water inside this one which was causing it not to work properly in the field. So this one seems to be working again. Which makes me think that there's probably some water gotten inside here. Uh, which was causing it to fail before. Uh, this one still has no response to the external buttons and doesn't allow any power through. So uh, we'll start with this one and see what we can find. Well, looks like we found the problem. May have been a little water has gotten inside this and exploded one of the buttons. Um, looking from here, it was the test button that has exploded. I'll see if I can get this board out and uh, we can look at what's on the other side. They've used um, uh, a molding. They've actually fused the uh, strain relief on both of these uh, power cords and molded it right to the plastic. Uh, there wasn't any kind of gasket on the outside edge. I was able just to pry that apart, but it may have been, it looks like it was actually uh, ultrasonic welded, plastic welded together. So when this was brand new, it was a entirely fused waterproof unit, but through uh, abuse, uh, it eventually managed to get some water inside. Whether through the button, Oh, the button, which is quite charred on the inside, uh, or whether it came through the cracked plastic. Um, water got inside this, and uh, looks like it shorted something out in a pretty spectacular way. So here is that uh, current transformer. So you have both the line and the neutral passing through this current transformer. So if everything is working properly and you have one amp of current coming in through your line it'll go out to the tool and then return back through the neutral back through the current transformer and back out to the mains uh, if everything is happening properly those currents cancel out you have one amp leaving you have one amp returning the uh, little current transformer here measures nothing but if you have a fault somewhere, like you have uh, a leakage to ground through a tool or through the guy who's holding the tool, then this current transformer will read that you have current coming in through one line and less current coming back through the other line. In which case this will actually trip 
uh, that relay on the end. They have a big, uh, fairly clunky mechanical relay here, uh, which actually does the switching. And the other one, you could hear it when you press the button. There's a pretty uh, mechanical sounding clunk to it. Uh, also interesting, they're using a uh, neon indicator. Um, these are nice because they tell you if there is actually uh, power available. These neon bulbs work almost directly off of 120. Um, they just need a little bit of resistance to stop them from uh, passing too much current. So let's see if we can figure out what was on the other side of this uh, that would cause it to explode so spectacularly. So I've gone over with Sharpie uh, just to follow that trace and make sure exactly what it was that happened. So it looks like the original problem started up here uh, with water bridging between uh, the two traces uh, here and here. This side is connected to the little bridge rectifier on the other side and this larger trace is actually connected to the line uh, as it's entering the relay. Uh, this is the switched uh, output for the relay. So this little trace here which is the other side of that bridge rectifier goes all the way over to this side which is the neutral input. So when water bridged from here to here it blew the trace right off. That short circuit was so high you can actually see the trace is curled up. There's a little copper curl sticking up off the board. After that shorted out the current couldn't pass through that missing trace anymore so it had to go through another path which was it went through the bridge rectifier which is on the other side of this board uh, out through the wire labeled J3 out through here through the button which then exploded maybe when somebody pressed the button trying to figure out what was wrong with their GFI device and then back all the way through here through the resistor on the other side and out to the neutral. Here's that little resistor on the other side and the trace back to the neutral. So this must have had two big bangs from it. One when the uh, trace blew off and then another one a couple minutes later when somebody started pressing buttons to see what had gone wrong. Looking inside I'm going to tip that out. You can see the trace there on the table. Where it's blown off. There's the shiny copper trace uh, where it's come right off of the board. So it doesn't look like there was any massive design flaw in the way that it was it was built. The problem is that uh, the case wasn't nearly waterproof enough or not rugged enough. Uh, you can see when I split the two cases open uh, that it actually left some of the plastic. So these were likely uh, ultrasonic welded together. That's where the two pieces of plastic are pushed against each other and then an ultrasonic transducer uh, wiggles them and eventually friction welds them together in the same way that you can friction weld metal. So I hope you found this video interesting. Uh, if you'd like to see more like this, check out my channel. Thanks for watching.